Yo, what is up, YouTube? Welcome to another NBA 2K20 video, and Happy New Year's. We are officially in 2020. I hope everybody's 2019 was great. I hope you guys all got to accomplish everything you wanted to accomplish last year, and hopefully moving into 2020, everyone has a great year. 2020 is supposed to be the new generation of consoles. PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, I think they're calling it. They're dropping this year. Let me know down below. Let me know in the comment section, which one are you copping? Which one are you going to get? Me, personally, I think I'm, I'm probably going to get both. More than likely, I'll end up getting both. But I don't know which one I'm going to play on mostly. I think it's going to kind of depend on, honestly, where most of you guys are. I'll probably pick whichever one more of my fans are choosing so I can play with more of my subscribers. So if you guys are PlayStation 5, if that's what y'all copping, let me know in the comments. If y'all sticking with that Xbox, if y'all sticking with the Xbox, you know, I've been rocking with Xbox for a long time. If y'all gonna be on the Xbox, let me know in the comments. Xbox Series X. I wanna know, I wanna see. But today's video, we're gonna be getting into the best post-score animations on NBA 2K20. These are tried and true. These are tested and verified. Top tier post-score animations. These are the most up-to-date animations that I'm using on my post-score. I've been using bunch of different animations since the game has dropped and I've kind of tested a lot of different ones and these are what stuck these are what have stuck with me through all the testing and these are honestly the best animations for a post score in NBA 2k20 I don't really see any variations past these that could be much better so for those of you that have been out there asking me can we get an updated animations video what's this what's that I'm gonna break it down for you guys the best post hook shot to use best post fadeaway the best shimmy shot that you can use the best post hop shot step back the best jump shot that you can use on a post score that's big believe it or not your jump shot's gonna affect your post fade so that's huge you want a jump shot that works well with your post fadeaways all the different post animations the best dunks you can have the, the face up animation you know your your dribble stance that you can have all of that is going to be in this video we're going to break everything down for you guys barney style and i'm going to show you guys all of the different best stuff so we're going to get right into it right here let's take a look looking at my animations that i'm using on my post score on nba 2k20 anytime that you guys are seeing me play so the jump shot is a custom jump shot dame 38 is what i have it titled that's because it's base 38 with damian lillard release so it's just base 38 100 damian lillard release so that allows me to get base 38 which is pretty quick and i get to use damian's release the release is really what's going to affect your post fadeaway and i love the damian lillard paired with my post fadeaway on this game it's like a perfect pairing it goes so well together and it makes a fadeaway so easy to time as well as gets off pretty quick so that's the jump shot base 38 damian lillard release free throw it's derrick rose if you guys want to copy it my dribble pull up is going to be none other than my man Dirk Nowitzki, one of the greatest power forwards of all time. We're using Dirk Nowitzki. You're not going to do too many dribble pull-ups as a center, but that's what we're using. Spin jumper, big two. Again, you're not going to be doing a ton of spin jumpers, but if you're playing like twos or threes, there's actually a pretty neat fake in here with the big two spin jumper that you can kind of catch some people off guard with sometimes. It kind of gives you like a Hakeem the Dream type of a, of a fake. It, it throws it in there. You might be able to get someone with an up and under on a spin jumper. So that's why I use that one. Up jumper, again, a move you're not going to use too often on a post score, but I have Trey Burke equipped. So if I ever happen to do a hop jumper, maybe I'm playing against somebody that's not too great, I'm messing around, having a good time. This is the hop jumper that I'm using. It actually does create a lot of space. It's honestly not too hard to time once you activate. So you go into this hop jumper, and even with this post score, but if you guys copied my exact build, I mean, it's, it's honestly not even that hard to create. So it's probably a viable option if you really want to use it. It's something maybe you can use out of the face up. So if you're face up on something like twos, threes, or pro am, you can you can drive and hit a little a little hop jumper, step back, um, and maybe shoot it on. So I'm using Trey Burke. That's what I'm using. And now into the actual post move, that actual no shit post moves. Fade three, fade three. I've been using fade three for two years straight now and i haven't really deviated much away from it because it's undoubtedly the best fadeaway in this game now some of these other moves there's going to be some good options that you guys can choose if you prefer but the fade do not use anything other than fade three i promise you fade three is by far the best fadeaway especially the animation going towards the free throw line if your right hand is going to be on the right side of the court if your left hand is going to be on the left side of the court that fadeaway right there 
creates more space than any other move in this entire game as far as post moves are concerned. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. You're going to get a ton of space very, very quickly. You want to be using Fade 3. And then, of course, the other fadeaways that's in this package as well, they're also very quick and they create a moderate amount of space. So it's overall a really great fadeaway package and all the fades in here are great and super easy to time. And not only that, but it pairs well with Damian Lillard, like I said. So if you have that pairing, that's the pretty much the perfect pairing. You're going to be set as a post score. Moving on to post hook. I am using post hook one now. I went ahead and did some testing with some other post hooks. I was using post hook five for a long time and it was good. It worked for me. I, I still like it. I have nothing wrong with post hook five, but I wanted to test out some other stuff just to see if there was something even better out there. So I tried post hook three. Wasn't a huge fan. I know a lot of people love it. If you guys like it, go crazy. But post hook one, I tested out post hook one and this hook shot is phenomenal. It's quick and it creates a good amount of space. It's, it's a really, really solid hook shot. My problem with post hook shot three was it kind of dragged me away from the paint. When I'm shooting a, a hook shot, I want to stay in the, like I want to shoot near the paint. That's why I'm shooting a hook shot. If I wanted to get away from the paint, I'd do a fade away. So hook shot one stays near the paint, but it's also quicker than five. So I really like post hook shot one. Highly recommend any of you guys out there looking for a hook shot or just want to maybe try something new. Yeah, at least give post hook shot one a try. It's absolutely great, but definitely five is really good too. And three super popular. I don't like three at all, but it is popular. So if you want to try post hook shot three, go crazy. But I think overall, I think one is probably the best. Post hop shot. I like post hop shot seven. It creates a lot of space and it's fast. It's very similar to post hop shot 10, which you've been watching me for a while is what I used to use all the time. I used to use exclusively post hop shot 10, but they kind of slowed it down in this 2K and last 2K. And post hop shot 7 is really very similar to post hop shot 10, but it's much quicker. So you're really creating as much space, but it's a quicker animation. So of course, post hop shot 7 is a no brainer for me. I love the animation, super easy to time. The step back in it is pretty good as well. It's not my favorite step back out of all the packages, but it's probably top three. It is a good step back, but you can't go wrong with the hop shot that's included in this one. It's absolutely probably the best hop shot. You have this one, maybe hop shot five are my two favorite. Hop shot one people love, but that's not really, in my opinion, a great hop shot. Hop shot one, what they love about it is you can kind of hop in the paint and do an up and under. They like to try to cheese people with it because a lot of people don't know how to guard it. It's not hard to guard, first of all. So. I, I don't consider it a cheesy move. It's, it's not hard to guard. But me personally, with a hop shot, I like a hop shot that creates me space, not a hop shot that I can use to get an up and under. So I want something that creates me space. A post hop shot one definitely does not do that for me. So I don't like it at all. But if you guys love it, go ahead and go crazy with it. I know a lot of people always ask me why I don't use post hop shot one. That's why I prefer seven much better. My post shimmy fade. I have actually changed this since the last animation video. And I really like Shimmy Fade 10. I really like, let's see if I'll show you guys the animation. It gives you this one animation that I really love. It looks like you're going the one way. Like it really, really does. And knowing my luck is probably not gonna show us here in the different animations. Yeah, it's, it's not gonna show us, but there's an animation in here that I absolutely love. And it, it gets people a lot. As I've tested it, people jump, literally jump the wrong way all the time. And I get a wide open shot. So I don't use Shimmy Fades that, that often. Maybe at one here and there in a game. I might use one, but when I do use it with this Shimmy Fade 10, that fake is absolutely great. And it's quick and super easy to time, so you really cannot go wrong with it. But I'm mostly using Shimmy Fade 10, like I said, for that one fake. I wish I could show you guys the animation, but I don't have a clip of it, and it would not show it there in the animation. But you guys will have to take my word for it. Give it a try. Just give Shimmy Fade 10 a try, and you guys, you guys will see what I'm talking about. That fake is phenomenal. Post shimmy hooks, I don't really use these ever at all. I don't really encourage anybody to ever use these at all. I actually used it once. I used it once, I greened it, and I missed the green. Some of y'all was in the stream for that. I, I missed I missed the green shimmy hook. So that, to me, that's a sign from God that like I was not never meant to be using this move in the first place. Terrible, but I have shimmy hook too equipped, if you're interested. Moving on, the dribble moves. I really don't change much in here because I don't dribble obviously with my post score too often, but I do have behind the back normal three. I don't really know why. I think it's just some random one I chose. And the triple threat style though, I did actually put meaning behind this. Normal eight, I really like the position to put you in when you're doing a face up. Obviously this is not something you're really gonna have access to on the ones court. But if you're playing something like twos and you're able to face up, I, I, I like the stance you're in with normal eight. So that's what I'm using normal eight for, the triple threat stance to help me with my face up. I feel like I get out of the, the animation a lot quicker so I can drive off the face up. So that's why I'm using normal eight triple threat style. The dunks and layups. Default big is the only thing I have access to. If you guys have access to something else, try out the different layups. I, I have access to other stuff on other builds and honestly, I still like default big a lot better than the other ones you get options as. 
as a center. So default big is what I'd be using regardless if I had other animations or not. Moving on to the dunks. I only get very limited dunks with my low dunk, driving dunk I have on this player. But these are the ones that I use. And I feel like they're pretty effective at getting dunks right under the rim. People ask me all the time after a drop step or a post spin, how do I get dunks so often? Most of it has to do with these animations I have. So if you guys want to slap on the same dunk animations, go crazy. It'll help you guys out a lot. But that's pretty much it for the animations. Really quick, I'm going to show you guys the badges as well. The current badges I'm using. Because of course, a lot of these animations, having these different badges helps out a lot. I'm not really going to break it down. But I'm going to show you guys real quick for any of you that were interested in seeing it. These are the finishing. Here's the shooting badges that I'm using. The playmaking badges that I am using as well as the defense and rebuilding badges that i use on this build so there's all the different badges as well as the animations for this post score build that's pretty much gonna be it and i i don't think i'm gonna be changing my animations much anymore and i'm probably gonna stick with this people ask me my animations all the time if you guys are watching this video like even if i do change one or two things in these animations i promise you all these animations are still good so go crazy feel free to use them drop a like on the video if you have not already i'd appreciate it hope you guys all enjoyed i'll catch you all in the next one man peace